Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Chunks O'Clock News, or This Week in Chunks. Um, I'm going to be going through some stories today. Just a, a brief chit-chat about current news and events that, that I feel should garner your attention, or at least um, request your comments and opinions and just make you more aware of what's happening around the world, or what's happening here. So let's go first to Republicans are engaging in a concerted illegal effort to hijack the election. Now this is from Politics USA, and I'm going to include this link that talks about GOP voter fraud. Remember how the GOP was claiming that they were sequestering people's votes and purging voter rolls and uh, requiring photo ID, which is kind of a poll tax because official IDs are not free. And they wanted to uh, make the process legitimate and bring back the, the respect that it deserves, even though there were something like seven cases of proven voter fraud over the last 30 years or, or some ridiculous you know, low number, but this became a priority. Again, it's all about jobs, and it's all about the economy. You know, that's 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 where we're going. So, next step after abortion, breaking up unions, women's rights, contraception, teachers, destroying the environment, education. Now we're on to voter fraud. Okay, well, I hope you're aware, but recently there's been issues in West Palm Beach. Uh, Susan Booker, who's the supervisor of elections. Notice that 150 or so signatures on registration forms for Republicans were too similar in nature. You got an investigation that spread over to 10 counties in Florida and then bled over to many other states. I mentioned this in another video, uh, and it caused, I can't remember the guy's name. I'll look for it and, and leave it in the, in the links. But it caused this guy, who they, the Republicans spent three, $3 million, $3.5 million on this guy's company, who's been uh, shady in the past, to try to recruit voters, they had to suddenly distance themselves from them and fire these people. So the people that are claiming that they're trying to clear up voter fraud have now been um, attached, uh, associated with voter fraud. And this continues. <clears throat> this continues and it's continuing and it's continuing. So the, the, I don't know why the GOP can't run on its merits and be con convincing in their message that they have a good system and they're, they're going to fix things. They have to, to, to come across as being shady, inconsistent, and uh, have lacking of integrity. I got another story where they caught a guy uh, in Pennsylvania who works for one of these GOP recruiting firms and he had dumped a garbage bag full of voter registration forms in a random dumpster and just so happened to be seen by the owner of the business. They don't say anything about his party affiliation, but he turned him in and now this guy faces, you know, felony counts and type one and type three misdemeanors for destroying these uh, or trying to destroy these registrations. Work for a Republican firm. And it just goes on and on and on. But there's not really, the Republicans, the conservatives don't seem too concerned that they're being associated with voter fraud. It's just par for the course. You know, it's they, they accept a great deal of unethical behavior with their own ranks and hypocrisy, and they just keep plodding right along. i got to give them that. They just keep plodding right along. Uh, so I'm going to include this link. It talks about voter fraud and how it's happening with, I don't know, any Democrats that have been convicted of voter fraud or during this election. They've been fighting to just keep people with the access to the voting um, not trying to recruit. You've heard about saw that that woman who was trying to recruit Republicans only and, and bad mouthing Obama. You know that's iffy too. And they've been to the firm, distance themselves from that. So I'm going to include this link. That's one of them. I encourage you read it. You know, take five minutes or so. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is there's a plant called Sensata that's in Illinois. And it's been in business for 
at least 35 years or so, at least, and it makes automotive control sensors. It's an American company, employs 170 people. It's owned by Bain Capital. So Romney has $8 million worth of stock in Bain Capital. He used to run Bain Capital as a CEO, retroactively retired uh, in 2005 or something. All sorts of scandal going on in there. Whatever. So a couple days ago, the well, maybe a couple weeks ago, the workers, the 170 workers that work at Sensata were informed that their jobs are being eliminated. The plant's closing down. It's moving over to China because these average $17 an hour workers can be replaced by workers there that work for 99 cents an hour, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it's all about profit when you're talking about capitalism, right? That's why you've got to run government like a business. If you're not producing, if you're not contributing, you've got to go. And even though these people are contributing and producing, they got to go. And it's their fault. Remember that. It's their fault for being in this position. Uh, so these people went to a rally in Iowa that uh, Romney was appearing at for support. And all they wanted to do was ask him to help out and, and inform them that, hey, your company is closing us down. You know, we need these jobs. We need American jobs. And you're shipping them off to China, yet you call yourself a job creator. Well, the result was that Romney had him arrested, and the crowd, the intelligent crowd in Iowa, started calling them communists, shouting communist at people that wanted to keep their American jobs in this country and not have them shipped to China. I don't know where they learned the definition of communist. I have no, no clue, none. So I'm going to include that story in there. Last one, because... Three's a, a charm on the Romney issue. Romney's family buys voting machines. The family of Mitt Romney, his wife, his, one of his sons, his brother, have purchased the electronic voting machines that will be used in the 2012 elections in Ohio, Texas, Oklahoma, Washington, and Colorado. The candidate running for president bought the machines that are tallying his votes in five states. That's all I'm going to say about that. Again, I'm going to include this link. Oh, Tag's involved in this too, so make sure. Don't talk, to, don't call Tag a liar cause, or his dad because he'll take a swing at you, or at least he'll threaten to because he can win his arguments through truth and honesty and discussion and argument. No, I'm going to take a swing at you. The very rich are different than you and me. So I'm going to include this link. So that's the Romney hat trick for today. Now, number four on my list is another wonderful human being, Dinesh D'Souza, who exemplifies conservative values, traditional marriage, believes that uh, we used to be a great country and we want to get to that point and we've got way too much freedom. Okay, all right, Dinesh, what do you got? Well, it appears that 50-couple-year-old Dinesh has been hanging around with a 29, well, he's married, 59-year-old married Dinesh, who's been married for 20 years, has been hanging around and introducing a 29-year-old woman as his fiance uh, in these conservative events. Um, and fortunately, some people within had some integrity, and they called him out on it. Like, what are you doing? Oh, well, I, I you know, asked my wife for a divorce. I filed, you know, yesterday or a week ago. Well, it takes six months for these processes to take place, minimum six months. So the man who's defender of traditional marriage, anti-gay marriage, uh, all those great conservative values, I mean, just fill in the blank, is shacking up with a 29-year-old outspoken anti-feminist who believes, who has written and believes that women shouldn't have the right to vote and men are just big wussies. And that's why this country is all screwed up. The gays, the lesbians. I'll in include this. Her, Dinesh's wife of 20 years was named Dixie. And this woman's name is Denise Odie Joseph II, which is odd having a woman named the second. I don't think that occurs very often. And you'll read some of her some of her outbursts about how angry she is at traditional marriage. So 
uh, I, I'm sorry, how angry she is at the corruption of marriage due to the gays, the lesbians, the liberals, and the sissy men. Um, you know, what do you say at this point? I'm trying real hard to get on board with the conservative agenda. I'm trying real hard to listen, to think critically, to forget my cognitive bias to, and my emotional attachment to the things that I was brought up on. I want to I wanna understand. I want to keep an open mind. And I know I'm just cherry-picking examples. But these aren't just random things. These are highly unethical, hypocritical, and completely unacceptable behavior by people that others look up to and others support. Um, very, very strange. I wish I had a number five. I really wish I did. But I don't. So those are the top four things in your your uh, I am Chunks of Earth, the Chunks of Clock News. And uh, I look forward to your thoughts, your comments, your arguments in support. Because uh, I don't get it. I just don't get it. And neither should you. Um, is there anything else I wanted to include? Let me check here. Hmm. I already talked about the other senators and leaders. You know. Oh, I guess the last thing I want to say is that with all these crazy Tea Party people saying these most outrageous things about women, abortion, contraception, rape, uh, I'm pretty unhappy that it takes the people to call these people out on it. Because none of these statements made by uh, these conservative types have any sources cited. They're just random statements, um, anecdotal evidence, and the people accept it. And the Democrats and the independents, and even their own party, some of the GOP is, is kind of distancing in general, but there should be national outrage about this. And have we declined so much as a people, as a nation, as a, as a, I don't know what to say, that that all these things just, whatever, you know, heh, okay. <sighs> this has been the Chunks of Clock News. I'm Chunks of Earth, and so are you. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow for Science Sunday. That's it, Science Sunday, tomorrow, when we'll be talking about all things sustainable and maybe how science and politics continue to be intertwined with medicine, humanity, and uh, our future, the future. May chunks be with you.